Good morning, folks. Uh, first time on Vimeo. Figured might as well get an account set up now that we have video on BitClout. We're going to do a lot of fun things. I think the beauty of a new platform, it provides you the clean slate to create. And it's almost like a new day of the week, a new day of the month, a new journal entry. I think people just naturally get excited by having a blank piece of paper putting pencil or pen to paper. There's something about that organic creation. So it's awesome. I'm still trying to brainstorm different ways to really support my coin holders. We're in the middle of a crazy food delivery journey. Uh, it's been going on for 16 years. I started the business in college. I went to Indiana University. I wanted to be a sports broadcaster growing up. And my freshman year in college, had a radio show, was doing some sports announcing, play-by-play, -play, color commentating for anything from the ice hockey games to softball and baseball. I actually was able to color commentate my freshman year with a couple seniors for IU basketball games, which was unbelievable. But to be honest, I was always wanting to start something. I really did care about making money and as much as I had passion for broadcasting, what didn't appeal to me was the notion of having to wait decades to most likely get to the point where I was financially comfortable. As much as I was down to grind through that day to day and love the industry, it was tough fathoming not making a lot of money for years. So, you know, my freshman year in college, I was really just thinking to myself, what am I going to do? Grew up in New Jersey, huge foodie. Uh, Indiana did not have the best food back in the mid 2000s. This was the early Google days, folks. So we're talking about the Bell Atlantic yellow page books were still prevalent in college town. So I would show up at the dorm and back then, if you wanted food delivery, you had basically all these paper menus all over the dorms, you know, in the crevices of the couch, on the floor, in the dorm hall. And it was an ongoing problem because unless you were eating the cafeteria food, which we all know in the dorms gets old after a while, it's great early on, you pile on the freshman 15 and then you're like, okay, I need a breather here. It was very limited my freshman year at IU because on one end, you couldn't have a car as a freshman. They didn't allow that. So where the dorms were wasn't in walking distance at all to any really viable options besides just the dorm cafeteria food. So my freshman year, I get back spring break. I'll never forget this. A day early, my parents sent me back and they did the cafeteria was closed. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, I don't have a car. I need to order food delivery naturally here. So it was such an arduous process. There was a hotline back then called 855-IUIU. You would call the hotline to then be given the information for a restaurant to call them. So imagine calling a hotline and then calling another number to get in touch with the restaurant. So right away, I'll never forget, I got parlayed into a call to a place called Peach Garden. It was a Chinese restaurant in town. I was craving some dumplings. There was a, a language barrier, uh, definitely misinterpretation. I tried ordering. I thought the food was on the way. My food never showed up that night. And I remember asking myself, wait a minute, this clearly is a problem here. And I called back the hotline asking how often are people calling in at, you know, wanting to get connected to restaurants for delivery or pickup or their phone number. She's like, Oh, well, probably over a thousand times a day. We have operators shifting gears, you know, every few hours we have different people in here, but the phones are always ringing off the hook. So then I thought, okay, well, there's something here. I was 18 at the time and I had no tech background at all. All I was thinking was there needs to be a way to somehow get everybody here in one place to be able to view these menus. So my brain naturally shifted to what if we had all these places, these restaurant menus in one place. So at the time, this was crazy. I had a buddy that I became friendly with 
in the dorms through my friend Joe Daverno. Joe Daverno and I went to high school together. He was the only kid I knew at Indiana University. We happen to be in the same dorm, not the same floor. I think there's something to be said for not rooming with your close friend going into college so you could spread your wings a bit and not be limited. So we ended up being in the same dorm, different floors. But there was a guy on his floor that I ended up becoming friendly with. His name was Peter Margulies. Peter actually at first wasn't even on Joe's floor. He was in a different dorm. We ended up bonding over our mutual friend, Scott, who was in the dorms at the time. I was a real big online poker player going into college, not like a, as a job, just for fun. This was the early WSOP, ESPN coverage. Everyone wanted to win the bracelet. So that was a huge craze back in the 2003, 2004 era. So when I saw this kid, Scott, playing cards on Joe's floor, we started playing cards, ordering food, watching sports. Scott's friend, Peter, from his town growing up, would come by. We hit it off. And next thing you know, Peter and I are thinking about, you know, let's open up a restaurant or something. You know, we were really thinking we need a good pizza and wrap place. We were East Coast kids that just felt like there was a huge need for a great sandwich, a great salad. And there was a demand for it. But I remember having a heart to heart with my dad. And he's like, Mike, you don't understand what goes into running a restaurant. You're going to be stuck in that town way beyond your college years. He knocked some sense into me. And what ended up happening from there, I think it, it just goes to show folks that sometimes things just happen. You put yourself out there. The universe just comes together. Pete and I ended up going to dinner with his family friend who was coming into town just on a visit with his son. They're, they were seeing IU to see if the kid was going to go the next year. Pete invites me out for some reason to dinner with them when they were driving through town. We go to Scotty's. I'll never forget to this day what I ordered even. I had a chicken parm wrap with mashed potatoes and a side of mac and cheese. They had these phenomenal wraps at Scotty's, really popular sports bar in downtown Bloomington. It was a staple we went to all the time. And it just so happened that Pete's family friend just started asking us what we were up to. We were brainstorming the restaurant idea with him. And he's like, you know, I want to connect you with a, a, a family friend of ours. I believe it was his nephew who had just started a menu guide with a couple guys at Penn State. And we got connected. They had basically launched a menu pages at Penn State that previous year. And they had started to build out uh, or license out at the time, I think it was online ordering. So keep in mind, online ordering was such a novel concept. People were not on mobile apps back then. It was the early internet days, Google. Googling it was not a default mechanism. You still had Netscape, Yahoo. So the mentality of getting somebody to order something online was not commonplace. So in my industry, just to fast forward here a bit, these days, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, the education's rampant. You know, everyone knows food delivery and saying that there's way more competition and it's a David versus Goliath situation. When we first launched our business, we were the big man on campus. There was no real big competition, no real money in the space. We were on shoestring budgets. I would be going door to door, knocking on the dorms, passing out pizzas. It was crazy. Uh, and I'm going to go over different war stories that we had in the trenches. I figure this could be a fun series going over the early days, getting started young, what goes on behind, behind closed doors, but I just wanted to get started here and I'm really excited and I hope this first Vimeo worked out and I'm all, uh, very, very pumped up about BitClout, the community on there. I've been meeting so many people. I think coming out of this pandemic, it's so vital that we have that human touch factor and the element from talking to people on Clubhouse with the personalities behind the profiles to then seeing all the great content curation and brilliant minds on the BitCloud platform. Hey, I think we're heading into a new era, the sharing a